Hello guys, Nigel here with you. Just working through this um, 124 Scalarific Spitfire and it dawned on me that there's a video I could do here for beginners that would probably be a great help to them um, and not just beginners, you know, newer modelers as well and it's concerning holding parts, generally holding parts for painting which is what we do, we don't generally hold them for anything else uh, and I mean holding them rather than holding them in your hands, holding them, you know, to be able to paint them and then be able to put them down without damaging the paint. So there's a few different methods that I use um, and I'll go you know, right back to basics and then come up to all the stuff you can buy. Obviously we've got stuff like you can see here that you see me using that can be bought but there's other stuff that's readily available, cheap, free, you know, whatever. So if we start really first of all the simple stuff, like say this engine cover panel here. Say I wanted to paint this like I have, I only painted it as a guide. Um, and I want to hold it so I don't get paint on my fingers. Any old piece of wood, bit of perspex, anything. Get a couple of strips of blue tack and I can just stick that on there and it will hold it and I can paint it. Now obviously it's no good if I want to paint the other side, but for just painting one side of a panel, it's absolutely perfect. I've got blue tack on here. I would recommend if you if you get if you get some, get white tack instead. This is white tack, obviously it's white, blue tack is blue. Um, white tack is less greasy, so it doesn't leave so many marks. But I've never really had a problem with blue tack, to be honest. But I do know that white tack is less greasy. It doesn't mark your wall so much if you put posters up with it. Um, but it is also a bit more sticky, I think. So that's your first option. So you can just do that, hold the panel, spray it, and then when it's dry, just take it off. Job done. Another thing you could do is get yourself a piece of balsa wood. Okay, this is just a knackered old piece of balsa wood. I've cut it about, made jigs with it and everything. It's years old. It doesn't need to be fancy and special, but you could also use a piece of balsa wood. And I could just get a couple of pins, so I can pin that there and there, pin that there. Okay, um, it'll fall out there, won't it? So what we need to do is pin it like that. Okay, and then it won't, yes it will. <laughs> but I think you get what I mean. I'll put another pin up here, put a fourth pin. Okay, and that one. I think you know what I mean. You can hold it with pins, but it's much better to use blow tack. If you've got something with a hole in it, obviously you can put that down and put a couple of pins in there and hold it, and that's great for spraying like that if you want to. Okay, so yeah, block of wood with pins. I don't tend to use it very much, to be honest. Um, it's handy for stuff that's flexible if you want to spray it because you can pin it out on there and then just spray it. But, um, you know, generally that is a far better solution. Um, and then also say this panel here, you wanted to paint this whole part uh, and you know, this tab here doesn't need to be painted. Again, you can use this method and have that there and just stick that in the blue tack and then you can hold it painting like that. Okay. The other way you could do it is put it in a clothes peg, paint it and then you can rest it like that. The whole idea of this is holding it so you're not getting paint all over your hands, you're not holding an area where you want to paint and you can put it down while the paint dries without scratching it. So that's that one. The other one is these little bulldog clips. These are great for stuff like this because they're quite heavy and they can, you can put them down like that. And also if you've got one of those Tamiya rotating paint stands, they, these will actually fit into the slots around the outside. So absolutely brilliant. There's another one. Um, if you're wanting to hold something like this spinner and paint this on the outside, you can get, get a lump of blue tack, stick that lump of blue tack in the bottom there, and then these are, you get these barbecue skewers, you can see they've got a very sharp point on the end, and they're about 10 inches long, I tend to cut them in half so they're easier to handle, so just get one of those with a blunt end like that, just stick it in the blue tack, and there you go, and you can hold that. Um, you also get the stirring sticks like this, which are great because you can get a piece of blue tack or a piece of white tack. You can stick that on there like that, okay, and if you just wanted to paint one side of this, for example, you can stick that on there, and now you can paint it. If you wanted to do both sides, you could put a piece of blue tack in the middle. You may find, no, it's not, you find the piece wide enough, you'd be able to wedge it on there, whatever. Um, and then going on from that, if you want to actually be able to hold your parts and be able to sort of, because obviously you can't put this down, you can put... If I put this on there, I can put that down. If I put that in there, I can put that down. If I put that in there, I can put that down. But here I need something to hold it. So 
what you can do is buy yourself something like this. This is an Infini paint clip stand. You can get it from Premium Hobbies and you can get that and you can stick your piece in there and hold it like that. Okay. Or if you don't want to spend the money, you can get yourself some cardboard. And I should have prepared for this because I've got parts all over these. But basically, here we have, you can see, this is just a strip of cardboard. I did a video on this. Have a look. It's just a strip of corrugated cardboard. You can roll it up, tape it together, and then you can stick that in there. And then you can, I mean, you could hold the parts in here and paint them if you wanted to. But it's great for holding the parts to let them dry, which is exactly what I'm doing on my Spitfire. Because I'm halfway through making part 10. Another one is, you can see this here. There's one of those, um, this is actually from KFC, from the corn on the cob. Don't ever throw these away, they're brilliant. And you can just drill a hole in your part and push it in like that. Which is another way of holding parts, which I'm going to talk about in a second, is drilling holes in them. So now you can put that on there, and then once you've painted it, put it in there. And it can sit there and let dry. Okay. Obviously these radiators here just hold these and paint them, you don't need to because but when I come to paint the insides, I'll stick them on there. Job done. Um, also when you've got these flat wooden sticks, if you want to spray something like this ammunition canister, I could put a piece of blue tack on there, put that on there and I can paint it. Or if I want to paint it all the way around, just take the end. Stick that in the slot. You've got a slot down there which fits to the top of the gun. Stick that in the slot like that. Now you can hold it and you can paint it all the way around. If the slot is smaller, you can see what I've done here. I've sliced it down so it's thinner, sort of fit into a thinner slot. If it's too wide that way, you can just cut it down. Sky's the limit. You can do whatever you like with these things. Um, and then on, on to holding parts like these. These tubes here they are exposed well except for the last little bit they're exposed on their whole length so i can't really hold them successfully this there we go i can't really hold them successfully uh, i could clamp the very end but i'd rather not mark the plastic because it's quite a tight fit in the hole so all i've done is come along get a set of these little drills okay and then i think that's 0.8 in there i've just literally drilled a hole in the end if you can see that hole I've drilled in the end. Now, if you don't want to go to the expense of them, you have your little barbecue skewers. Stick that in there, and I can hold it. Okay, so I could you hold that on a barbecue skewer, or you can buy those. Um, and I've done the same with all of them. Again, with this part here, this intake. Now, this is going to pop into the bottom of the engine here, like so. Okay. So that bit's going to be hidden, so I've drilled a hole in it, as you can see, and then I can put my spike in there and hold it. You can do the same with cockpit seats. You can drill a hole, but don't go all the way through. Drill a hole in the bottom, hold them on. So the other thing you could do, get yourself a wooden stick like this, drop a super glue, stick the part on, and then when you're finished, break the part away. Something like a cockpit seat or something, you can stick it to the bottom, and then when you break it away, it doesn't matter, because no one's ever going to see the bottom of the seat, are they? So that works really well. Um, moving forward, if you want to move away from, you know, go to the sort of more professional stuff, you can get these clamps. Now these are internal clamps, so I can stick this on there like that and spray it. Okay, now I'll have a couple of areas in there that won't be painted. What I can do is, after it's dried for a few minutes, just move it around and then touch in the places where it's been touching. You can see I can get to it all the way around on both sides. Absolutely perfect. And then I can stand it in my Infini stand because they're bigger, because they're fatter wood, but they are tapered on the end, so they will go in there. Uh, and then there's there's two different sizes of those. There's smaller, smaller ones and bigger ones. That one, I think, yeah, that one will hold that. So that'll be handy for holding that one. I come to actually paint the, the ends, the insides. Okay, so we've got that one there. Um, then we have these here. These are metal spikes, and they have like a, um, a roughened end on them. So they actually go into parts and hold them. So like you saw me do on this one, which one was it? I had this one here, didn't I? I put a metal, a wooden spike in that one. I can put the metal spike in there, push it in and it holds it. Because the end is, is like etched, it, it kind of digs into the part a bit and holds it. 
again I've drilled that in an inconspicuous area and what's happened there is the hole has become expanded where I've taken it on or off so many times so it's better now to use the wooden one so there we go then you've got the clamp type you've got these here these are Infini clamps sorry those are made by Infini okay I've done reviews of all of this stuff and then here's the metal clamps the the crocodile clamps and as you can see using them here to hold these exhaust manifold part so I can hold the, the little stub on there that goes into the engine okay I can hold that and I don't need to paint that so I can just work on it like that okay um, and then you've got here for fragile parts like I've done here I'm holding the actual part that's going to be seen and because these have the teeth on them they will mark the plastic especially this plastic is a little soft um, I don't know if I can show you but if I give it a squeeze as well you do get little I don't know if you could make that out but you get little tiny indentations in the plastic but you hold parts like that to paint them and then stand them in your paint stand again you hold a part in there stand it in your paint stand and and that's really what it's all about I mean the, these three last products well these last five products you've got the large the small you've got the point and then you've got the clamps there unprotected and protected they're all in finny all available from Premium Hobbies if he has any stock. Uh, a lot of people are emailing me lately and telling me that he's running out of everything. So I don't know what's going on. I think there are supply issues with everything in the world, aren't there? So um, so there you go. When it comes to things like your undercarriage legs, be very careful. I could easily drill a hole in there, okay, and then put something in there, but it's going to weaken the leg. So what you do is you look at the part and you think, well, it's going to be held in there. That's where it fits into the wing. So I'll hold it on there, paint it, absolutely perfect. Um, things like this panel here, if I just want to paint the front face or I just want to paint the back face, again, back to the block of wood, okay? Or a piece of blue tack on the back, job done. But we've got a load of ejector pin marks to get rid of first on that one. So, um, there you are but just remember if you if you're doing like i said about super gluing things make sure you're super gluing in an area that's not going to be seen where there's no detail and it's going to be easy to snap off for instance if you super glued you know if i super glued a piece of wood into the end of here it may be difficult to snap off because it may start pulling the center out of the spinner so you're better off using your blue tack in there all right so um hopefully that's been a bit of a help Oh, of course, the other method is leaving parts on the sprue, which drives people crazy. Some people think it shouldn't be done. Leaving parts on the sprue, no problem at all. I'm actually leaving these parts on the sprue to work on them. But what you could basically do is remove these little ejector tabs, clean up the part. When you know it's all good to go, spray it, paint it, whatever. And then when you finish, you can take it off the sprue, clean up the nibs, and then just go around with a brush and touch in the areas where you need to. But, um, Lots and lots of people do work on the sprue. The other thing you might want to do with this is, for instance, this is the top, that's the bottom. So perhaps what you could do is remove that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, and just have those two holding it. And then you don't have any cleanup to do. The only bit of cleanup you'll have is there, which is going to be glued into the fuselage anyway, so it's not going to be seen, and there, which is underneath. So planning ahead, thinking about what's going to be visible, what isn't. So um, there you are, guys. So hopefully you've learned a little bit from that if you're new to the hobby and what, what sort of thing is available. Um, I must be honest, I've been modelling for 53 years now and I've had these fancy bought ones for about six months and I've always managed without them. But I must say, yeah, since I've had them, they are so convenient. You know, you just come along, take that part out of there, move along to the next one, pick it up, you know, job done. It's not, there's no messing around with cleaning up. Um... You're not getting your, um, you know, blue tack on your parts or anything. You're not super gluing anything. They work really well. And then when it comes to clean, you can see they've got paint on them. Because these are all steel, they're not wooden. Some of them, like these, the cheaper ones, have a wooden shaft. These are all steel. I could come along here. I have xylene, or I could use cellulose thinners. Okay, you watch how quick this is. Put that in there. Leave that for a couple of minutes, not even a couple of minutes, just a few seconds. Take that out of there. 
and I can wipe the paint off as you can see it's got a lot of paint on there it needs a few more seconds but generally if you're not making a video you're not worried how many seconds you take are you make sure you don't get this stuff on your hands guys it soaks into your skin attacks your bones you get the idea, you can see that most of that paint is off of there now. If I left it soaking in there for a minute, all of that would come off. No problem at all. You can see it's all clean. All right, so like I say, you could use cellulose thinners, which is a lot safer, I believe. Um, or we could use, I'll tell you what we'll get it off, this stuff here, Mr. Tool Cleaner. This stuff is like bloody Tamiya Extra Thin. It's um, very, very hot. I'm very, very aggressive. There we go. See? Gone. It's like brand new now. That's how easy it is. Just to show you how quick it can be with this Mr. Tool Cleaner, you can see this one here has got grey and black and everything all over it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five seconds. There we go. All done. So that's the beauty of them. They're reusable, they're cleanable and everything. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. And I will see you all soon for another instalment on this beautiful Spitfire kit. It's going together really well. And uh, I'm also going to be doing another video for beginners on seam cleanup. So uh, there we go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.